Hey everybody, so yes, finally, after you've been bugging me for a long time, <laughs> I finally have the Lexmoto LXR 380 SE. Uh, I have this on loan from Lexmoto directly. This is something I do very regularly. I take bikes from them. I have them for a few weeks, couple of months. Uh, I do like a first ride video. I then use it as my normal sort of get around bike. And at the end of it, I make a review. Uh, this is just kind of like the first ride. Technically, it's not the actual very first ride, but yesterday it was so dank and horrible, and the tyres were massively underinflated that I couldn't really tell you much about the bike anyway. Today, I have pumped the tyres up, and I've got to pop into Portsmouth, so I've got to use this on the dual carriageway and stuff like that, so this should be quite interesting. I have reviewed the Lexmoto LXR 125, not the SE, the standard one. Uh, the difference between the 125 standard and the SE is smoked screen, uh, aluminium swing arm, aluminium yokes, upside down forks and then the differences between the LXR SE125 and the 380 are obviously the engine being a 380cc, the brakes are independent ABS and it's a big set of brakes on this and the tyres are different. Um, I don't know what they're made of, let's not get into that one again, but these feel pretty soft like I can actually get my nail to stick into that which is quite nice compared to how hard some of the uh, the nylon tires can be I'm not saying that these are nylon but I'm equally saying I don't think they're rubber <laughs> I don't know so that's something that will come up in the future but I wasn't going to do the first ride on a day as disgusting as today but this is what the weather's going to be like for the next week and this is quite possibly the best weather we'll have this week so I thought, get the first ride done uh, while the bike's clean-ish. <laughs> it won't be after this. And hopefully you can forgive me for the dankness of the video. Dankness in the bad sense, not the good sense. Um, but I wanted to get the video made, so let's just do it. Number one thing to point out. The key is uh, like a flick knife. Now, I ha understand this is the same as what's on a Benelli of some sort, and someone has said to me, yeah, these snap quite easily, be careful. I'm not saying that this will. Feels fairly sturdy, but it is what it is. But what I can tell you is if you hold this and you put a grape on a table and you give it a flick, you can actually send it about eight feet. So that's a selling feature. The key is also a fruit flinger. <laughs> now, you will notice from the sound, this has got the stock exhaust on it. Um, I personally would want a louder exhaust than that one, but it is what it is. Size-wise and everything like that, the uh, 380 is exactly the same as the 125. It's the same frame, it's the same bike, and it's one of the reasons why, as I said in my LXR 125 review, the LXR 125 seems so big, is because it is actually, in fact, a bigger bike. It was always supposed to have a bigger engine in it, it's just they put smaller engines in a larger frame. It makes the LXR a good bike, but it does mean that it's a little bit large for its sort of engine size. This, as I say, 380ccs. It's got around 40 brake horsepower, which in the A2 market, because obviously this is what this bike is for, is 8 brake horsepower underneath the legal limit. Okay, well this is the first time I'm actually going to open this thing up. And the way to straighten up a bit, it's very slippy today. Okay, so there's the rev limit at just over 9,000 RPM. Hello, we're up to 10. And that's 70. Okay, well, it, it, it pulls along. It's not the fastest thing on earth, but I was, I was more confused then about where the, the, the limiter was coming in. The limiter comes in at 10. The numbers don't go red till 11, and this shows 13 on the clock. It is not revving to 13K. It's not revving to more than, you know, just it looks like nine and a half. Everyone's pulling off. What have we got here? Bad about it. I haven't even got into 6th gear yet, and it has got it, well I mean at 55, 6th gear is just trundling a little bit, the gearing must be pretty high on this. I'm going to have to check to see how loose the chain is on this, because I'm feeling a, a bit of a doo 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 as I'm uh, getting on off the throttle. 
I can't imagine it's loose, but it feels that way. Okay, well going along there, uh, 65, 70 mile an hour at places, in fifth gear, I wasn't even using sixth because the, gear, uh, the revs were low enough. I wouldn't want to have them uh, any lower than that. So that seems pretty good. We will find out more about that in the future, as I say, uh, when I can get out on a day that the weather is not so disgusting. I happen to be coming into town because I need to pick up an inner tube for my uh, DRZ400, as you may have seen in a recent video. I got screwed in the back tyre. Uh, but thankfully, because it is, in fact, a tubed wheel, I should be able to just put a new inner tube in it. There isn't much damage to the tyre itself, which is great. And I'm steaming up. However, that's not due to arrive uh, in the shop until about four o'clock. So I have a bit of time to kill and I thought, well, let's just let's have a look around Portsmouth. Let's use this bike in the town, see what it's like in a normal commutery sort of situation. Changing lane, last minute. About 60% of the people watching this video aren't subscribers. If you want to see more videos on this bike, if you want to see more videos on bikes that I do in the future, hit that subscribe button. Help me reach 100k. I would really appreciate it. And also, while you're at it, smash that like button. Regular viewers are saying, what? What did you just say? It... Let me have this one. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to give you as much information as I can when I do the full review of this bike. Uh, but for now, I can say that I am six foot four, and this actually seems pretty comfortable for me. Uh, of course, the sizing is no different from the old 125. Let's just check the feet. My feet are completely flat with a bent knee. Like, <laughs> if I'm on tiptoes, I could almost sit on top of the tank. So don't worry if you're a little bit shorter. I think this bike will be a good one for you. And this is a dead end, which is not good for me. <laughs> ah, okay, so for me at my height, doing tight UEs, I need to mess me up. I have to get my knee out the way because this comes in so far that my knee's there and, you know, gets hit. That's something I get on pretty much all sport bikes, to be fair, because, you know, it's got these sort of clip-on style handlebars and they come right down here into the tank. I could see someone changing the bars on this to something a little bit higher up, so you're more sports commutary style bars, a bit like what I've got my XJ6. It's certainly pokey, I mean, for, you know, for round town stuff, you don't, you don't need it to be much faster than this. I'd say this engine gets reasonably warm, going on the fact that the fan is full on, and uh, it is absolutely freezing today. And the clutch is nice and light, obviously it's got full length uh, levers on it, so that obviously aids to that. It has an adjustable front brake, uh, but even on its most out setting, still to my hands feels a little bit close. Uh, no, I suppose it's not too bad. Actually, I, th I thought I was going to say it was a little bit close to the bar, but I've got big hands. I've got to remember this. Now, as my regular viewers know, but the new ones might not, my other half has a CBR 500R, um, and I absolutely love that bike. And I can feel similarities, obviously, because it's a very similar sort of bike, uh, between the two. I do think that the 500 definitely feels punchier than this, but then that's probably because it has got an extra eight brake horsepower and it'd be able to uh, give you a bit of extra torque. But this is actually fine. As I said earlier on, I don't think I've been asked to review a bike so much as I have been for the 380. Like, as soon as I got the Vendetta 250, before I even had it, you're going to get the 380. Then I got the 250 Vendetta because the 380 hadn't even been released. In fact, I got the 250 on the day that the 380 was released um, and everyone was like that's great and everything but have you got the 380 yet <laughs> so I now have it and I will let you know what the next bikes are going to be the next bike I'm going to review is very likely as in from Lexmoto there may be others from other companies I don't know it depends what happens the next bike is going to be the Pegasus 300cc sort of maxi scooter bigger scooter you know uh, that Lexmoto are doing because I actually quite like them. I wouldn't want to own one, but I can get why people like them. And as I've reviewed the uh, the Suzuki Birdman 650, in fact, that's a very, very popular video, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views on that, uh, and the Birdman 400, with the famous scene of me overtaking a Harley rider saying, you should have got a proper bike. <laughs> 
it would for that reason be interesting to try a cheaper option from Lex Moto in that sort of area. The bike after that, that's debatable and I might put that one up for the vote because a lot of people want me to do the, is it the Issaca or is it the Ithaca? I can't remember that one. If you know which one it is, you know which one I'm talking about. Uh, and the other one is the people have asked about is the Riot. So if you're going to leave a comment below, let me know what one you would rather see, the Riot or the Issaca, Ithaca. Uh, one of them is like a 125cc commuter. The other one is like a 125cc uh, Grom uh, equivalent or the Kawasaki, whatever it is, the, the little one. Basically, it's very little and it has little wheels and I'm six foot four and you want to see me on it so you can laugh because it will look, well, it's the, it's the closest you're going to get to me on a Grom. And uh, I know a lot of people have wanted that. Actually, maybe more people have asked to see me on a Grom than they have to see me on this, but it's a close second. Fantastic news, it is time to go and pick up my inner tube. So I can get home out of this cold as well. Oh. Okay, let's quickly try the front brake. Just want to try that gently first. Make sure the tyre's cleaner and warmer. Right. Front brake. Yep. Pretty reasonable. Try a little. Try very slightly harder. Yep, feels good. Rear brake, as I say, is very uh, it's very effective compared to how some rear brakes feel. Yeah, and, and the, the, the anti lock's working there, obviously, because uh, it's I'm actually being quite strong. Let's see if I can get it to kick in. Yeah, I felt a very slight movement and then it... The bit is where it kind of lets off and, and reapplies the brake. Engine braking. Well, that locked up the rear, so... Oh, God, we've got a dry corner. And it lasts all of two seconds. As you can tell, I'm already starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with this. It kind of switches at some point in my brain. I ride a bike for a, a while and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I get it, I get it. I know what this thing's going to do. I feel, I feel comfortable with it. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with this bike so far. As I say, I really like the LXR 125 as a sort of the actual physical bike, but it, it did feel very much like it was a bigger bike with a small engine in it. And it exactly was that. This feels like it's got the engine it should have had in it. Now, because this is a Chinese bike, we will get lots of people saying, ah, Chinese this, Chinese that, Honda this, Honda that, CBR this, CBR that. As I say, I like the CBR 500R, I really do. Um, but you can't buy a brand new CBR 500R for the money that you buy this. It's, it's, it's not possible. Yes, you can get second hand, but that's not the same thing. That's second hand. The 125cc market, as I've talked about in the past, is a bit of a nightmare. It's a bit of a minefield with owners not knowing necessarily how to look after a bike. That's not quite as applicable when it comes to the A2 market because by this point, people have made their mistakes on their first bike and then they look after the next one properly. But it does seem that people's expectations is that, oh yes, I basically want every single thing that that bike, for instance, has, but I want to pay two grand less. You can't have your cake and eat it, as they say. You can't have everything you get on a CBR 500R for two grand less. I'm not sure if it's actually two grand, I'm just picking a number out of my head. Well, I think it's something like two grand difference. I will at this point give a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Uh, if you want to consider joining my Patreon, it can be as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you basically get videos three days early, get to be part of the Q&As, and you also get to like PM me and just be part of the community and help support this channel. Anyway, let's call this one to an end because that camera's about to die and I'm, the place I need to go to is only around the corner. So huge thanks for joining me. Don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, the LXR 380, very promising. Pretty much everything I thought the LXR 125, but with the engine it should have had. Fantastic. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.